Hi all, Mass Barnkopf from Kaiser Power Electronics here. Today we're taking a look at this Nokia Siemens Multi-Radio Flexi Base Station System. Now this is quite interesting because I have previously taken apart the FXEB, which is a 3x90 watt amplifier. This is another model of that same series, it's the FXEA, which is a 3x70 watt amplifier, but it has software tunable front end filters. So I guess that means we will see the cavities that they are tunable by small servo motors, which we have seen before in other models with small uh, plastic parts with copper surfaces on, that it can move back and forth to tune the filter. So let's get this torn down. It has unfortunately been standing upright like this in the rain where it was uh, thrown out. So rain has entered through these yeah, power and network ports. When I got it, it was, uh, yeah, I could hear water washing around inside of it. And if you saw my earlier post on YouTube uh, social about having a stack of amplifiers with water in them, yeah, this is about the reality. All the previous uh, three I have uh, taken apart had serious water damage inside of them, so I expect nothing less from uh, this one. And you can see the same goes for my workshop here. I'm also taking water in because it's another shitty day with raining in Denmark. The FXEA module consists of uh, two other parts. There is the FXEA, which is the whole filter section, but it also has a MTRX submodule, which is the system board sitting here at the bottom. Now this is a two receive and one transmit channel amplifier. As we can see, we have antenna two, four, six is all only receive channels. And these uh, are normally never used in the configurations they are put up in Denmark. Antenna one, three and five are both transmit and receive channels and these are normally used. Now these uh, smaller um, receive output, they are not used as well. Ethernet for uh, diagnostics. And then there's three optical inputs for the uh, main uh, computer module that this connects to. Over here uh, we have power input. This is taking um, 48 volt DC. And the power module itself is not a part of this amplifier. It is a quite heavy unit. I would say this is at least around 25, 30 kilograms. So it will be exciting to see why this is so heavy. Now I can remove the uh, sub-module. Just can get this loosened a bit. Ew, and as you can see, the water damage is already quite substantial in this one. Because it seems that something happens with thermal paste and water, that it simply turns into this white slime and there's also a lot of uh, rust um, in it so despite what you should think that this is all made from stainless steel parts and uh, gold plated things well then there is almost always a couple of um, iron parts that simply make it all rust up if it takes in water but then again it's never supposed to take in water so it's fair enough let me just get this uh, cleaned up and we will take a closer look Despite having poured out almost one deciliter of water, I can still hear water moving around inside the unit. So let's just get all this shielding off and let's see how bad the damage is. Let's see what the shielding reveals. A highly corroded power supply section. That just has a small cable there. And a fairly nice filter section here. So that's, that's good enough to actually do some circuit ana analysis on. And we have the diplexer filter underneath. Once we take this PCB out, there will be another plate with all the yeah, serious amount of screws that we normally see on a diplexer. So let's just get this down. This is the first time I have ever had to wash down the PCBs of a teardown. So right now they are pretty wet 
just pressure washed it with a uh, garden hose. As we can see, it still has a lot of uh, rust on uh, some of the components, so that's not working again. Not that it was intended to. Uh, but I will get these dried before taking some uh, pictures of them, so we can inspect the uh, high-resolution photos for the signal path analysis in part 2. So for now, uh, I'll just put these to the side and get them dry. And now you shall hear the genuine sound of a diplexer. Oh, and water! How lovely! And there it goes. Just has a few connectors sitting up there. Look at that beautiful diplexer here. That matte silver coated uh, aluminium with all its uh, small copper couplings between the uh, different cavities. It's just pure art. This is really beautiful. Now, um, if we just take a look at the software tunable filter. This is what makes it software tunable. For each channel there is a small servo motor that can move these uh, three racks back and forth uh, a bit. This amplifier is actually a little bit special because it's the first time I have seen a uh, removable plate on the side. This is where the power input is and the fan connector. So it seems they have moved some of the power electronics away from the RF section. So let's just get this away real quick. This could also indicate that this is a newer unit than uh, the previous I have taken apart. That some improvements have been made. I certainly don't hope that the, all the water in Southport is because of this solution. Okay, so here we have the input DC connector. We have the gold plated fuses some uh, ceramic capacitors, a uh, choke, seems like some rectifier diodes, and yeah, just a decoupling um, or energy storage electrolytic capacitors. From here it connects a small connector out, but it seems that the big connector power for the amplifiers is, uh, or the whole uh, section in front is this one. Which makes me wonder, does this really power the entire amplifier section as well? Well, we will see once we take a look at that. As you can see, the connector for the fan goes out here. Finally, we added the power amplifiers in the MTRX module. Now, that's quite interesting because that means that this module should be the identical to the one sitting on the other that not have tunable filters. This is no different, except the power rating is lower, but maybe that has to do with the filters being tunable, that they can simply not guarantee the same power output, unless it's done from the uh, manufacturer. Ah, all that lovely gold plating, I really, I love it. So this is just our system board, where we have the optical um, network input. Here we also have the CPUs for the whole encoding, decoding of the signals. We'll get this washed down, take a look at it later. Now the power amplifiers, that does not look good. There's a lot of goo here from uh, thermal paste. So let's just see how bad it really is. Oh! It's actually worse than I expected. That's... Ah! I hope you enjoyed the teardown of this Lucky Siemens Flexi BTS multi-radio system, which was the FXEA model. And as we, as we could see with the comparison of the images along the way, that it does not have the resemblance to the FXEB. So that is two completely different systems. 
So I hope you look forward to the part two with the circuit analysis of the signal paths in the system board and also the power amplifiers. So until next time, see ya.